In this video, we will cover the mixer tab. Its structure looks very much like most digital audio workstation mixers, but there are several perks you'll enjoy, especially when working with acoustic drums from the mighty Megapack Drum Empire 2020. But first, here's a signal flow diagram. Each drum produces a signal and potentially room and overhead signals. Output of the drum is processed using effects you can control in the mixer, and the result is sent to any output channel as well as any send channel. Overheads and rooms too have their FX pipelines in each drum, which is normally impossible when mixing live drums, and then all drums are mixed together. The mixed results are processed using another dedicated FX pipeline and then sent to any output channel. Sends also have FX pipelines, and after that they're sent to any output channel as well. And finally, when everything is mixed in each output channel, there's yet another FX pipeline for each of them. In M Drummer 1 out, all outputs are then mixed together. In M Drummer 16 out, each output is sent to a dedicated bus in your door. Back to the mixer. Each of the channels I've mentioned are present in the mixer and color coded for better workflow. For example, bass drums in red, snares in blue, toms in green, etc. If I move this slider to the right, I'll uncover sends, overheads, and room channels. And finally, the output channels are completely to the right. You can collapse each section so that you can view only the channels you need. Let's start from the drum channels. On the top, we find the output selector that defines the output channel this drum is sent to. Click on it and select the channel you want. Next down is the FX section. As you already know, M Drummer comes with a whole bunch of cool plugins from Melda Production covering all possible scenarios in drum production. Equalizers, compressors, distortions, specific stuff, you name it. To insert a plugin, Click on the plus button, or double click anywhere in the empty space, and choose the plugin you want. You can have as many effects as you need. Double click on a plugin to show its user interface. To delete a plugin, select it and click on the trash button, or hold Alt and click on it. Right click or shift and click on an effect to bypass it. Drag it to change order. You'll also find all sorts of useful commands under the menu button here. Below there's the ratio control, quite an unusual one. It has any meaning only for acoustic drums which support it at the moment from Drum Empire 2020, and it controls the ratio between two microphones. Which ones? That depends on the drum. For snare drums, that's the ratio between the top and the bottom mics. For bass drums, it's the ratio between the mics inside and behind it. It makes it really easy to control the sound of the close mics used for the particular drum. Each drum has two send controllers setting a signals level going to the send channels. Typically you use send channel one for a reverb and send channel two for some amping and compression. Then you set the amount of reverb and amping in each drum. Mainly, snare drums and toms are usually processed this way. The reverb makes the sound big and ambient. An amp makes it thick and in your face. Then, you use the volumes of each send to control the amount of ambience and thickness. These are pretty common tricks used by many professional mixing engineers. Lower, we find a pitch parameter, an unusual controller for a typical mixer, however here it is very handy.
close parameter controls the level of the close mics only. Shouldn't the volume fader do just that? Not in M Drummer. Here, the volume fader controls the overall level of each drum, so the close mics, overheads, and rooms. Perhaps a bit non standard, but highly efficient when it comes to workflow. Next down are panorama and level controllers. I'm sure you know what they do. The sends, pitch, panorama and level controllers support door automation. As usual, right click on any of them to reset them to default values. On the left from the level fader is a level meter. Don't be afraid if something goes to the red area. In the digital domain, we don't need to worry about that too much. The button with a pencil icon takes you to the drum set editor so that you can edit the details of this drum. Solo and mute buttons are quite obvious, but these ones may not do exactly what you expect them to do if you're used to mixing acoustic drums in the classic way. Here, they mute the certain drum completely, hence including the rooms and overheads. So, if you want to listen only to the bass drum, easy. But what if you want to audition only closed mics? There's a handy button in the mixer's title. Same thing if you only want to audition the overheads and rooms. This makes it easy to audition any element of the drum set, for instance, only overheads of a snare drum. One more thing to mention is that the meters of each drum do not display the levels of the closed mics, because that would literally show nothing for acoustic crash cymbals, for example since these do not have any closed mics in the first place. So the meters show the maximum of all three, closed mic, overheads, and rooms. This way, it is easy to spot which drums and cymbals are being played. At the very bottom, there's a button with a drum picture and name. It's not just a beautiful picture. It's also a drum trigger with velocity. The more right you click, the higher the velocity will be. All right, moving to sends. On top, there's the output channel and FX pipeline. Then there's the width. Minimum produces mono signal and values above 0% make the stereo field wider. You can do the same thing with a plugin, but this is just easier to use. The rest of it is self explanatory. Next are the overheads and rooms, which are nearly identical to the sends, but they also feature the ratio control. This lets you easily control six pairs of mics, two pairs of overheads, and four pairs of room mics. That assumes it is supported by the multi samples, of course. At this moment, it is only available in Drum Empire 2020. Finally, the output channels. These only have levels and effects. I already mentioned the collapse buttons in the bottom, but that's not all. There are also two more handy buttons in the title, which let you simplify the mixer up to a point where there are only volumes and panoramas. Finally, there's the batch modify section, which is collapsed by default. It can make your mixing experience much faster in certain cases, it lets you control parameters of multiple drums at the same time. For instance, when you want to change the amount of sends for all toms, you can do that manually, of course, but instead, you can also just touch a single control and change all of them. Either use the button to set the same value to all of them, or use the plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the values.
Snare drum may seem like a single drum, but in M drummer, there are multiple articulations, such as a rim shot or a swirl, which you may want to have the same settings as the normal hit. So the batch processing comes in handy again. Finally, there's a cool button in the title, which lets you disable all effects everywhere. So you can listen to the raw sound of the drum kit. That's all. See you next time.